And I, I've been watching him for a while, and I realized, you know what he is? He's a chick whisperer. He speaks woman. And it's a very effective tool because women hold a lot of power. Like, when he was hired to do The Daily Show, he was hired by a woman. Uh, do you have her name? See if you can pull her up. Yeah, there she is. And she was interviewed by Variety, I believe it was, and they said, well, why Trevor Noah? And she cited reasons such as he's really appropriate for 2015, uh, and he's such a citizen of the world, was another quote. In other words, we're not really concerned with funny. We're concerned about multiculturalism and what it means and, and, and globalism, basically, diversity. You know, funny is in there somewhere, but our real priorities are racial harmony and blah, blah, blah. So he wasn't hired because he was funny. He's hired because he's a mixed race guy from South Africa. And by the way, she had to step down shortly after that because ratings were plummeting from her terrible decisions. But check out, so you heard about this woman who said kefa, which is like uh, their N-word. She, so she's getting three years in prison for saying racist things, right? This is swearing, basically. This woman's going to jail for swearing. And we have government-sanctioned murders going on. Uh, white farmers are being slaughtered there. In scenes so gruesome, I don't know if I can say them on the show. Well, let's try. Uh, a toddler crucified to a, a kitchen table, then gang-raped in front of the parents. Uh, another baby gang-raped, one years old, I believe, then burned alive while wrapped up in newspapers. I mean, we obviously can't show you these pictures. I think the one reason that the media is avoiding it is because you can't, uh, civilized people can't stomach what is going on over there. And the scary part is the government advocates it. You have politicians screaming, shoot the boar, singing, kill the white farmer. Anyway, Trevor Noah's take on all this? That woman deserves to be in prison. She said that swear word way too many times. <laughs> Go ahead. But I will say this, you gotta understand in South Africa, after apartheid ended, like white people were never punished, right? Like it's not like the government was like, we're gonna send white people to jail and we're gonna take white people's houses and we're taking white people's money and things white people stole. No, government was like, hey, let's move forward, okay? Clean Sounds slate. good. Let's move forward. Let's get this country to where it needs to be. The only thing we're going to take away is this racist word. That's all. That's all. And then some white people will just like, pause okay, it I just there. Want one thing. Can I have the racist word? Isn't that insane? First of all, what is this obsession with punishing white people? We have to punish. You see that so much in American politics. Like that beautiful little girl, Lexi Page, was taken away from her foster parents and brought to another family because she's 1.8% Indian. And if she goes with this other family, they're like 1.2, so she goes up a percentage, and now she's 3% in a 3% Indian family, and it's part of the Indian Child Welfare Act. Why was that promoted? Why was that allowed to punish white people for what they did to Indians? It's revenge. And, of course, the six-year-old is the one who suffers. But it's a strange, sadistic policy to have ingrained in the government. But go ahead. Let's see some more, Trev. Back. And then they still want to use the word, and then they were like, no. And so that's, like, now this person has gone to jail. And what I find funny is, like, people who are online and everyone, they're like, this is, this is a tyranny. That's what this is. This is oppression. Like, you know, like, what, if, what, do I, what am I supposed to do? It's like, just, just don't be racist. <laughs> I love how people make it like it's the hardest thing ever. It's not like you go to jail for, like, mistake racism. This is, like, hardcore racism. And people are like, I, I don't know how I can live in this country. South Africa has become a tyranny. I, like, I can go to jail for just being racist. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> for saying a racist word 48 times to the police. Yeah, yeah. No, this is horrible. What am I supposed to do? Just don't be racist, that's all. Just, just don't say the word. They're like, this is horrible. I'm like, it's not actually that horrible. Like, I'm willing to bet if, like, you had that situation flipped. Imagine if a black person in America said, like, cracker to a white cop 48 times. I would have been shocked if they got to 15 before they got shot. That would have ended real quick. Be like, you cracker, you cracker, bang, 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 bang. Be like, oh, shit, what happened? I, I thought his words were a gun. I'm so sorry. I, oh, my God. That's, that's enough. Is that nauseating? I hate 
this guy. It's it's funny how some things set us off and, and others don't, like the NRA stuff. I just go, well, I don't understand your argument. But but this kind of stuff, this hypocrisy really makes me sick because people are being murdered right now. And the, the assumption, by the way, if you have a problem with it, is that you can't accept that you're going to be a minority soon and you're losing power. That's the assumption. There's all these assumptions with political correctness that no one has to justify. Like, we need to censor conservative sites because they can lead to alt-right stuff because that can then uh, uh, start a new Nazi party and the next thing you know we have another Holocaust. And you go, I understand your theory, but it's a nutty theory. As I said the other day, it's, exact, it's exactly as absurd as saying we can't have guys running around in short shorts. I mean, they're gonna, it's going to make uh, other men think they're gay. And the next thing you know, we're going to have like thousands and thousands of gay people everywhere. So men, keep those shorts long. I don't want to see your sexy legs. It's just as illogical. But check out, check out Trevor woman whispering. This is how he got the job at Comedy Central. He speaks woman. So he's talking to Oprah. And the way he uses his rhetoric and charm with no facts or anything, just garbage talk, uh, appeals to ladies, especially Oprah, who's f taking this hook, line, and sinker. Talk, let's see the chick whisper. America's getting to a place where it feels like it is extremely divided along partisan lines. And conversations have shifted to a point where human beings no longer see a human being on the other side of this yeah. discussion. Can you just and pause it? Tough. So he's saying that we dehumanize people. This guy just lied and said that if a black man said cracker one too many times, he would be assassinated by the police. If that's not dehumanizing, I don't know what is. But go back to Trev. One side should, should be empathetic towards the other side when the other side doesn't see them as human beings. Uh -huh. And that's a fundamental breakdown that seems to be happening in America. And you can't deny, and, and this is my thing, is I tell people all the time, they go like, oh, if you hate America, why? I'm like, yeah, I never said I hate, I love it, if I, would, if I didn't love it, I wouldn't be here. This is a great place. What is she? America. She's like a, a, Americans. I have a, a scientist time. from outer space. Having an issue with Donald Trump doesn't Professor make me time travel. because every Republican saw it before he was in office. You know, and so if, if, as you said, going back to character, if your character shifts depending on who's in power, then was it your character to begin with? That's, that's the way I see Brilliant. it. So Brilliant. Doesn't mean anything. So he's saying that Donald Trump became right wing overnight when he became president, and that's proof he's a phony. This is a guy also, check out this clip where he just sits there and says, I don't know if, uh, if Donald Trump is a white supremacist. I know he doesn't like black people. Well, I would say this. I, I don't know if Donald Trump is a, a white supremacist. I do know that he prefers white people over black people. You know, I do know that he has said on multiple occasions that you know, he doesn't want black people involved in the counting of his money or you know, involved in uh, the running of his world. I, I do know that he has specifically gone out of his way with his companies to oppress uh, black people. I, I do know that he hasn't been as quick to react in the aid of black people as he has been with others. I do know that he has supported and continues to retweet white supremacists on his Twitter account. So I always say to people, I go, you, you tell me. It's weird because America is the kind of place where someone can get more offended at you calling them a racist than at the fact that they are a racist. So this dude is chock a block with rhetoric and divisive bullshit, yet he gets away with saying that's the problem with America in general. <laughs> Comedians are the worst. Comedians are the biggest huckster snake oil salesmen in pop culture today. They're all lying scumbag pussies who would sell their mother out. Unbelievable. Uh, we found pieces of nails being pulled out. We found hands being removed from bodies. We found people raped, uh, brutally murdered, uh, babies, children, uh, the farmers trying to protect their families, and, and there's just no stopping. Um, the, the farm murders are brutal. In Johannesburg, just outside Johannesburg, we had a farm murder where five people came in. It was arranged by their domestic worker. Um, and they 
drowned the 12 year old boy in boiling hot water so we had to remove the skin from the bath as, as all right as that's all I can take and the attitude from the West from America and the mainstream media is you get what you deserve it's the chickens coming home to roost right it really is shocking the amount of apathy we have here I, I think a part of it is that we can't stomach it. We can't stomach the horror. This is not a little bit of revenge for apartheid that's going on in South Africa. This is a civil war, a race war. This is a tiny ethnic minority being tortured to death and driven into extinction. I would never go there in a million years. I would never let my daughter or my wife go anywhere close to South Africa, but a pretty blonde named Lauren Southern has decided to go check it out. And of course, all our worst fears were confirmed. Let's talk to Laura about the ethnocide, the ethnic cleansing that is going on in South Africa today. Laura, are you there? Yes, I am. Now, you just got back from South Africa. We've been watching your videos on Twitter. And, uh, you know, South Africa... We know the story, and, and some of us, the curious class, who cares, is familiar with it, but it just never ceases to amaze me how bad it is. I mean, I went there, and every time I go to go cover a story, whether it be the migration crisis in Europe or the situation in South Africa, I go with a grain of salt, and I say, I love the right, and I think they are fairly honest, that's why I'm on their side, but there, there's exaggeration that happens sure. uh, in all media. So I always assume there may be a bit of exaggeration. When I got to South Africa, boom, none of that. All of those assumptions that there was exaggeration going on out the freaking window. It was way worse than I thought it would be. Well, that's what they say. They say, look, there's black on black crime in South Africa. It's a dangerous place. But the level of sadism in the black on white crimes, particularly with the farmers, is, you know, unprecedented. Right. And th that's the thing. It's it's this wickedness. And the government, this is something people have to understand. The government classifies these farm murders as robberies gone wrong. But these are murders that take up to five days, five days of imprisoning a family and nailing them to a chair and raping them, children cutting their faces to pieces, cutting them limb by limb, boiling them in water. You can't just accidentally boil a 12-year-old in the middle of your robbery. No one accidentally does that, but the government classifies it as that. Well, what's worse is it feels like the government condones this. They call it reappropriation or something. Right. So that that's part of where I think this kind of vitriol and wickedness in the attacks comes from is you've got this kind of two-tier thing going on. The government are all Marxists. For people who don't know the ANC, Communist Party, Mandela's Communists, they, they all preach Marxist ideology. So the kind of class struggle, you must defeat the bourgeois, et cetera, et cetera. And then there's also a strong tribalism between all groups, whether it's Zulu and Zimbabweans, whether it's Afrikaners and whoever, uh, there's just strong tribalism in that country. So those two things combined, the hatred of other groups as well as the hatred of other classes, creates this just absolute wickedness of anger and jealousy and hatred in these crimes. And uh, yeah, they, they almost feel it's justified, especially when you have government officials going up and putting out rhetoric like the EFF, who get 10% of the vote in South Africa, dancing on a stage saying, shoot the boar, shoot the boar. Yes, That's the yeah. white farming class, yeah. I remember seeing that. And, and Mugabe, has always said that uh, this is just, uh, you know, repatriation. This is wealth redistribution. He sent, he sent in mm -hmm. the war vets or whatever he called those kids to go and murder these people. So there's no sympathy. I mean, can you even call the cops? <laughs> um, yeah, that's the thing. The, the cops are useless for the most part. They'll come over and they'll be like, all right, people died. And maybe <laughs> if... Like the one woman that I interviewed, they caught the guy like months and months later and he had already stabbed his girlfriend to death. The man who murdered this woman, Janine's father, already stabbed his girlfriend to death. They didn't catch him. I think he even uh, got got off with the crime. And then he only gets uh, 15 years for murdering two people. 
he could be on parole in six years. So not only are the cops useless, the justice system is useless. And the government, they won't even collect, they, they have, since 2001, they now refuse to collect statistics on race and murder and farm murders. The so government is completely useless. It. I saw yesterday they're going to be running out of water in Cape Town in a matter of weeks. Do you want to know why that happened? That, that's actually a really fun story as well. They've, they've got something called BEE. -E. It's called Black Economic Empowerment. Now imagine affirmative action, but backwards. So yes. if you've only got 13% African Americans in the United States, only 13% of African Americans can be in the, the NFL. <laughs> you, you have to have proper representation. So Africana, the white people, there are only 8% of the population. So they fired like 50% of their government staffers in energy. And suddenly 